Thanks for inviting us in. It's now six o'clock. State police descended today on the little town of Atlanta. That's in northern Hamilton County. There's an investigation of a town official. Tonight, that official is not under arrest, but police searched and collected evidence at his home and several town buildings. Our Rich and I was there today as that investigation unfolded. Atlanta is a town of just 700 people. Indiana State Police added to that population significantly Wednesday with a large presence at several locations across town. Townspeople told me that the number of police vehicles and investigators was even greater in the morning before I arrived. An Atlanta town official confirms that police are investigating utility superintendent and building commissioner Andy Emmert. The official says Emmert has been in that position for years and served on the town council before that. Town hall was closed Wednesday as investigators searched for evidence there and at a few other town buildings. State police are not saying what this investigation involves, but investigators were at Emmert's house at the corner of Walnut and Meridian all day. They loaded two different classic Oldsmobile Cutlass cars off his property and onto flatbed trucks and eventually obtained warrants to haul them away. I never saw any crime tape at any of the investigation locations and state police tell us that Emmert is not under arrest. Longtime residents say that Emmert himself is a longtime resident of Atlanta. I sent him an email. I called and got his voicemail. I sent him a text message, but received no responses. In Atlanta, Rich Nye, 13 News. Now, Rich reached out to the Hamilton County Prosecutor's Office. They tell 13 News they are not able to comment on any possible pending investigation. Right now, IMPD is trying to figure out who shot and killed a man on the near northeast side of Indianapolis. Tonight, we know the man's body was found along a road near 21st and Sheldon Streets. Police tell us it's not clear how long that body had been there. Right now, they're asking for your help to figure out what happened. Seeking help from the public is one way IMPD tries to solve homicide cases. They also use technology and task forces. Tonight at 6, our Karen Campbell looks into the homicide rate here in Indianapolis and how our city stacks up when it comes to solving these cases. According to the latest statistics from IMPD, from January 1 to September 25th, 156 people have been killed in Indianapolis, the majority by gunfire. But only 50 of those cases were reported cleared. IMPD says the department's clearance rate is on par with previous years. 13 News looked at the same statistics in a similar-sized city, a city that seemed to be faring much better than Indianapolis. According to our sister station, WBNS in Columbus, Ohio, police reported 89 homicides. 67 of those cases have been cleared. IMPD says they work with law enforcement agencies across the U.S. on new strategies that can help enhance their policing. IMPD shared a statement with 13 News reading in part, by learning from other jurisdictions, we ensure that we are using the most effective methods to keep our community safe. In Indianapolis, Karen Campbell, 13 News. A jury just convicted an Indianapolis man for the deadly shooting of a woman back in 2022. Robert Reed Jr. was found guilty for the murder of Sherry Wolf. After getting arrested, police say Reed confessed to the shooting after getting into an argument with the woman. His sentencing is now set for November 8th. That is two years to the date after Wolf was killed. Tonight at 6, a man is now in police custody after two separate SWAT standoffs on the southwest side of Indy. Police tell us it started this morning when officers responded to a call near Raymond Street and I-70. That's when the suspect allegedly ran from officers after pointing a gun at them. Then a few hours later, another SWAT standoff several blocks away near Beulis Avenue and Beecher Street. That's where police say they took the armed man into custody. Now, during these two standoffs, Wayne Township schools were briefly put on a lockdown, but just as a precaution. Angela? Got sunshine and near 70 degrees right now. It's been a very mild day from start to finish. Almost cool this morning in the 40s. We're at 70 at Morse Reservoir, 71 Noblesville, 70 Greensburg, and 68 degrees in Connorsville and Crawfordsville. Temperatures will stay in the upper 60s, close to 70 the next couple of hours, and then drop into the low 60s once the sun goes down, then into the upper 50s, eventually back into the 40s. So grab the jacket again early.
early tomorrow morning at the bus stop. 8 a.m. temperature of 47. From there, we'll be in the 60s by noon. High temperatures tomorrow will be in the upper 70s. And this is the beginning of a warming trend. I've got a couple of days at or above 80 in the seven day with low rain chances. More on this warm and mainly dry stretch in the seven day. All right, we'll see you in a little bit, Angela. Thanks so much. Tonight, Indiana Task Force One continues their work in Western North Carolina. They're there helping with the aftermath from Hurricane Helene. Crews have been telling us they're having to navigate uneven and rural terrain, tracking down people in that area after heavy flooding and destruction. So if you'd like to help with ongoing relief efforts, here's an easy way to do it. Text the words Red Cross to the number you see here on your screen to make a $10 donation. That money enables the American Red Cross Indiana region to prepare for and respond to these kinds of disasters. Well, today, Eli Lilly announced a $4.5 billion investment to create a medicine foundry in Lebanon. It'll be located in Lebanon's Leap Innovation District. And as our Jenny Runovich reports tonight, this huge complex will bring hundreds of jobs when it opens in 2027. The 400 jobs created are high skill, engineers, scientists, lab techs. At the Medicine Foundry, they'll be focused on researching new ways of producing medicines and therapies, while also scaling up the manufacturing of meds for clinical trials. It's a first of its kind complex, seven buildings, 1.2 million square feet. Lilly says it'll not only speed up drug development, but also get it to patients faster at the pharmacy, perhaps a year or two faster. That's because everything will be developed in manufactured in one spot in Lebanon. It will enable us to address drug shortages and enhance the overall drug manufacturing process by discovering new ways to improve the efficiency, the quality, and the environmental impact of medicine production itself. The Medicine Foundry brings Lilly projects in Lebanon's Leap District to $13 billion of investment. The state is paying for road and water improvements at the site, and Governor Holcomb says worries about the water supply here are unfounded, that the project would not be approved if water capacity couldn't handle it. In Lebanon, Jenny Runovich, 13 News. Tonight, an Indiana state representative says the decline in state funding for education is creating a snowball effect. Representative Ed Delaney says a new report by the Legislative Services Agency shows the number of students getting post-secondary education is falling. That study found 66% of high school grads went to college in 2011. Today, that number is 53%. If you graduated in the class of 2011, 10,000 more of your classmates went to college than will be going if you graduate this year. That study also found funding for Indiana's 290 school corporations has fallen from over 43% to about 36%. Delaney told us that's creating a bigger burden for property taxes. We've said to our schools there are two revenue sources that matter or that are big. One is property tax and we'll squeeze that lemon as hard as we can and get as much money. And the other is state revenue and we'll just slow down paying that. Delaney went on to tell us he's hoping to make education funding a key topic in the 2025 state budget session. We've also reached out to GOP lawmakers at the State House, getting their input. We'll share their response once it comes in. Still to come on this Wednesday evening, investigating the Hogshead administration over harassment claims. Tonight, we want you to see how much that investigation could cost taxpayers. Angela? Scott, it's going to be warm for early October. Upper 70s, low 80s. I'll have the numbers in your seven day. But first tonight, an east side community now rallying around a beloved business owner. Tonight, we want to share the amazing outcome securing a future for Garcia's hot dogs. That's next.